So the week of new M4 Mac announcements are now over, and we've finally seen everything that we need to know about the new M4 iMac, redesigned Mac Mini, and the MacBook Pros with upgraded M4 Pro and M4 Max chips. However, in this fairly muted announcement, Apple snuck in some pretty huge nuggets of Mac gaming news, almost cast down in a haphazard way, probably insignificant to most people, but of highly relevant interest to us Mac gamers. So without further ado, let's begin. So first up, Cyberpunk 2077 has now been announced as a natively optimized Apple Silicon Mac game. So this is a pretty huge deal. Now we have been able to play Cyberpunk 2077 using Apple's Game 14 toolkit over the last year or so, but it's great to see that we are actually getting Mac specific Apple Silicon optimized features and that we don't have to use translation layers in order to get this to work anymore. It's gonna be built specifically for Apple Silicon hardware. And what's really cool is the fact that not only are we gonna get this on the Mac App Store, but we'll also get releases on GOG.com, Steam and the Epic Game Store, which means that if you already own the Windows version of this game, then you're gonna get the Mac port for free. Now I really wasn't expecting Cyberpunk 2077 to get a Mac release. What is actually surprising is the fact that we are getting some features, for example path tracing, spatial audio, and something called frame generation. So frame generation is the process of inserting frames between rendered frames, either through the use of algorithms or AI without taxing the GPU too much, resulting in massively increased frame rates. And as far as I'm aware, this is the very first game on a Mac which makes use of frame generation natively. I'm not actually sure what they're gonna call this, maybe metal frame generation. But anyway, it's the first game on Mac to make use of this technology and it's very exciting. There's a lot of applications, especially in other native on Mac ports, which might be coming out in the future. Speaking of which, there are plenty of games that have been displayed on stage here. Many are familiar. For example, we have Assassin's Creed Shadows confirmed to be delayed until February next year. There are plenty of familiar titles. Many are already released. For example, Songs of Conquest, Frostpunk 2. Many are upcoming, including Wuthering Waves, Resident Evil 2, Dead Island 2, Control. But there are a couple of games which we haven't had announced yet. One is called Infinity Nikki. This is a kind of whimsical open world cozy adventure game focused on dressing up the Nikki character with different costumes. And the other game is Where Winds Meet. So this looks like an open world action RPG set in a Chinese landscape, similar to maybe a Chinese version of Ghost of Tsushima, mixed with a little bit of the action from Black Myth Wukong. So this looks quite exciting. It's a game from NetEase. And both of these games, Mac ports, were basically suddenly announced at the M4 chip announcement for the MacBook Pros. And it's really cool to see that this is happening. The Mac platform desperately needs new games like these. And also during the iMac M4 announcement, if you blinked you might have missed it, this is Civilization 7 being played on the iMac M4. I believe this announcement was made quite a while ago that this was coming to Mac, but it's cool to see that this is being featured so heavily on the Mac stage. And the Mac gaming lineup is looking really interesting. So I think in the last year Apple have really focused on single player campaign games, which are linear and have limited replayability, but adding in open world games like Cyberpunk 2077 with a very healthy modding scene, adds tons of replayability and longevity, and also future releases like Wuthering Waves, which is one of the few very popular live service gacha type games, isn't something that I necessarily play quite a lot of, but I know is very popular. And these types of games are what the Mac gaming platform are in desperate need of. And lastly, we'll be talking about the fact that 16 gigabytes of RAM on a Mac is the absolute minimum now. Apple no longer sell eight gigabyte machines anymore. And this doesn't just apply to the M4 generation. Apple have also gone back to the MacBook Air M3 and the MacBook Air M2, which they still sell on their website. And they've spec'd it so that you can no longer buy the eight gigabyte versions of those machines. 16 gigabytes is now a minimum. And thankfully, Apple haven't actually increased the prices of any of these machines. So 16 gigabytes is the same price as eight gigabytes was last week. And it basically means that there's a whole new level of performance for the Apple Silicon Mac. And let me explain why this is a huge deal. So the RAM on Apple Silicon Macs is soldered into the logic board and it cannot be upgraded. But one of the trade-offs is the fact that we now have much higher transfer speeds for unified memory. But another trade-off is the fact that all the memory is shared. So if you're running a game on an Apple Silicon Mac on eight gigabytes only, this has to be shared with not only the Mac OS operating system running in the background, this also applies to the game running itself. And in addition, the VRAM or the video memory that the game is using, including things like textures and shaders, all of this has to fit on that paltry eight gigabyte machine, which let's face it, most normal people are buying the minimum spec machines. And simply because of this lack of RAM, many games won't actually work correctly due to this. If you're using eight gigabytes of RAM, then basically you're gonna run out of memory very 
very quickly, especially running a game like Baldur's Gate 3, which when you're running it in Act 3 is very memory intensive and it's going to start going into what's called swap memory. It's going to try to use the internal solid state drive as a RAM storage area and it's basically going to make the entire computer run really slowly and the game will be unplayable on 8 gigs. And Apple have done a pretty huge thing for Mac gaming by raising the minimum specifications for any new Macs that you can buy now. So it means that developers, publishers and gamers can now expect to have 16 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum. And this in turn is going to make gaming a lot more accessible as it means that games can now target that 16 gigabytes of RAM and they can be much more expensive. And it finally makes it true that basically every single Apple Silicon Mac that you can buy now can actually play all of these big AAA games. So anyway, that is my look at the biggest secret announcements for Mac gaming and this M4 chip announcement. If you saw or heard anything else that I missed, then please make sure to leave a comment. I've just bought all of the M4 chips that I'm going to be testing on Friday the 8th of November so make sure to leave a comment for any games that you want me to test on that day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.